Greetings, everybody. So far, I have talked about the green chayote, the white chayote, two varieties of baby chayotes, a relative of the chayote called the takako. What else could I possibly say? Well, I'm not done talking about this plant. Not only can you eat the fruit, you can also eat the seeds, which I did. You could eat the shoots, you could eat the leaves, you could eat the flowers, and you can eat the roots. This is the root of the chayote plant. And here in uh, Costa Rica, you can buy this. I've never seen this before in the US. Um, I've seen chayotes a lot, never seen this. And this is not like super common here, but I've seen it like a couple of times, a little bit here and there at the markets. So my guess is that this is not the most popular thing to eat here in Costa Rica. However, it is very popular in Guatemala. In Guatemala, they have a uh, popular dish where you take slices of this, you put cheese in the middle, so you make kind of like a little sandwich, and then you batter it and fry it. Sounds pretty good, not gonna do that. So depending on what this is like inside will uh, kind of lead me to what I'm going to do with it. Okay, well there you go, that explains it all, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's white inside and you can see some little uh, lines here and there. Those are kind of like fibery bits, I think, that are going through the length of the root. One thing that I'm noticing with this is that the, uh, the skin on it is very flaky. So just like cutting it has put little flakes of chayote root skin all over the place. Yeah, without much trouble, like little, little pieces of it kind of fall off of it. So it's a little bit messy. Not one to eat raw, I'll tell you that. Tastes like I'm biting a raw potato. But the texture of it is different. It's like, kind of like sandy or like dusty. Like you can bite through it, but it gives you like this dusty sensation on your tongue. When you bite into it, it kind of crumbles apart too. It's not like a crisp sort of root. It's a little mealy. But the flavor of it, it's like a, a raw potato, but maybe a little bit more juicy in a way. Yeah, there's more juice in there. The flavor of that is starchy, so I'm wondering if it will fry okay. I think that might be interesting. Uh, so let's let's give it a try. I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to attempt to make like a like a French fry sort of thing with this and see what happens. It might not become crispy just because how juicy it is, but it might taste good. Let's see. So yeah, this is kind of funky shaped. So I think using a potato peeler on this is going to be very time consuming, so I'm just gonna kinda like cut off the outer bits of it with a knife. Okay, so we've got some oil in that pan. Hmm, this is a little too juicy, I think. I think I'm gonna have to maybe lower the temperature a little bit so it doesn't splatter everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna go slow with this because these are quite liquidy and I don't want it to like make a big mess. Okay, already you can see that first one is brown. <laughs> Real time, it went brown in like, less than 30 seconds. So it's dark, it darkens very quickly. Okay, 
Okay, it's been less than a minute, and I think I need to take them out, otherwise they're gonna burn. Okay, so let's do it. Cooks fast. <laughs> but is it cooked on the inside is my, is my worry. I did not cook this very long, so maybe I'm being a little optimistic with the ketchup, but let's see. It worked. It cooks pretty quickly. Um, huh. Alright, so they do have a very low smoke point. But they also cook fast. I think maybe doing this in the oven would work even better. Um, but it's cooked. It feels like it's not. It feels firm. But when you bite into it, it's cooked. It's cooked through. If you gave this to somebody, they would think it was a potato. I mean, the texture of it is different. A little more firm, even though it's cooked through, and a little bit more juicy. But otherwise, it's like eating fries. Hmm. I think... This is something that could be experimented with. You could probably make a really nice french fry, or like a really long french fry, or something, using the chayote root. And uh, the coolest thing about it is that this plant is so uh, versatile. There's so many things you could do with it. You can make like some cooked greens with a side of fries and a uh, chayote stew all in the same plate, and it's all coming from the same plant. They all have very different flavors from each other, but they also all taste pretty good. So, chayote. You know, it's always something I've kind of like looked past at the markets, but it does have a lot of uses and is really good. So, for now, I think that's all I have to say about this plant. Uh, if you haven't seen them already, watch the other episodes where I reviewed the fruit and made a few um, different dishes with it. It's a cool one, and maybe one day I will find the leaves and the shoots and the flowers and I'll review those too. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day and JMac. They are mega patrons over on my Patreon page, which I've linked in the description below. If you are not familiar with Patreon, this is a way that you can support creators like me and get some really cool bonuses in return, like exclusive content, early access. There's even one where I will send you cool stuff in the mail. You gotta check it out, and that is linked below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way you can support the channel is by getting a t-shirt, like the one that I'm wearing right now. This is the Durian Anatomy shirt, which is available in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.